Okay, I just been over to my grandparents' house and I found out that they kept my models out for all these years. I built these models in 19, I guess 69, between 70 and 69, uh, when they came out with these models. And they had them all upstairs in the attic, and I just had to go over there and clean them out. They uh, died over uh, like 15 years ago. And I was over there cleaning out their houses, and they still had the models. And this is the uh, swept wing version. See here. Oh, you look at there, there's the motors. The motors, the jet engines. <laughs> I can't believe they kept them all this time. They're sitting up, upstairs in, a, in the attic in a box. Of course, they need to be all cleaned up. Here's one in the landing version. Uh, see how old these are. This is the Boeing. So they had the American flag on it. I remember this color. They decided not to use this color. Uh, see, there's the drop nose. See how bad a decal I was w way back in 60, around 69 and 70s, I believe I painted this. Had this made. Me and my brothers. I might get rid of them. I, whoever might like like to have them, I probably sell them. I probably put them on eBay and and sell them if anybody wanted them. I don't know if they ever make this model anymore. I found as much much parts as I possibly can. Okay, so you can see. Look at these uh, uh, jet engines again. I think you didn't get a good look at them. Uh, you notice the opening right here in this area here. I guess it's for the jet engines. And you look at this old open through the inside there on the top of here. Yeah, let's get a better angle at that. You can see the opening right here. Two openings. It's American flag right there. Uh, this thing had United Airlines that were used. Is right there here, right there here. <laughs> United Airlines was on the sides of here. I guess they was the first one was gonna get the uh, American version of the SST. Had United Airlines. USA Supersonic. What it says right here on this side, USA Supersonic on this one. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me get see if I the camera pick that up. We can read that. Well, let's get out of focus. Let's see if you can read that. USA Supersonic and SST. Okay, this is one of the two of the strangest uh, aircraft that the Navy had. Uh, this is the only aircraft they had. This is one of the last Navy or any even in the Air Force inventory with a gun, a tail gun, that was on the back end of it. Now this is one of six. I guess it's another model built in sixty. I built it. We, all me and my brothers, built during the sixties, or the early part of the seventy, late part of sixties, early part of seventies. You see right there is a tail gun. Uh, I thought they. I think they call these B twenty threes or B B twenty twos. Both the Navy and the uh, Air Force used them. Uh, the last thing they did with them is uh, use them as a uh, surveillance aircraft. I'd actually seen one of these things crash into the water uh, on that from from Navy films out when they thought they were all uh, out of service uh, during the uh, Gulf War, the first Gulf War. Now I didn't know that they actually put these things in operations. I thought just this is a plain old experimental aircraft. And also paint this one. You can see how good of a paint job I did when I was a 
in elementary school. <laughs> See how much glue that was on on top of this. I wish they'd make this model again. I don't know what for. I don't know how many the uh, Navy actually had of these. I believe they're F threes. I forgot. To, this is the only Delta aircraft that the uh, Navy ever had. Jet engine aircraft, even with this type of canopy. Uh, here's the two drop tanks. Here's some of the workable flaps. It had an uh, access hatch here, but I believe you can see the jet engine or the other guns or anything that was in the side of the aircraft. Uh, see the two uh, missiles, air to air missiles here, heat seekers, and this was the landing gears that go that. You see all the glue all over that. <laughs> see what? You see all that glue? So, you know, this is you know this is from an elementary school kid, but I think I'll be able to save this. But if anybody wanted it, or use it for a mock-up, or or you can use some of these. This plastic is so hard back in this day. You actually probably can use this for vacuum forming, uh, vacuum forming your new model. This this thing has raised rivets. Hear that? That's the raised rivets that's on there. That's what makes this such an interesting because they don't hardly. Some of the newer ones, they don't like to put the raised rivets on the uh, models here lately. This is sort of a neat aircraft. I might do some work on it. I don't know if this is 148 scale or 72nd scale, but I'm more likely to think this is a 48 scale, and that's this is the 72nd scale here. Okay, here's uh, two more of the cars. That I got a hold of that was over still at my grandmother's house. Uh, this is the experimental at Corvette. It actually the whole back end opened. This whole part right here opened up. Uh, I don't know what uh, what year or what type of car this is. I had to look it up. But you probably be able to tell from the front end on this one here. Uh, you might be able to know what it is by looking at it. Uh, I believe it's an earlier muscle car. I'll probably add this this one just to see how good I am. I might add this one to my Slayer vehicles. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking I might do to it. Make, make it part of the Slayer vehicles. You know, back uh, during the 70s, early 70s and 60s, uh, to be able to buy these cars and the, you would put your frame together with screws. You wouldn't actually have to glue them together. You had screws here, screw here, screws there. The screw in your frame itself. Uh, the other things you, that you did, they don't do hardly anymore. The uh, way I put these wheels on is a wire goes through here, and you actually had to actually had to use a hammer to knock the uh, parts in, so these wheels actually could roll. And we would, you know, do a usual during the time Fourth of July comes around. We'll take them all out, put the bottle rockets in, and roll, launch them down the down the streets <laughs> during the fourth. And that's what we, what we did with our model cars. They even some tried them some with our jets and see if they were going to the air like rockets. But this is a interesting car here. I might uh, I don't know what I would do with it. It looks like more like a spaceship, but I know this is one of the experimental uh, Corvettes. It would actually open up from the back end here like that that's the way it would open Oops. let me do that again I got lost focus there for a few seconds but this part right here would raise let's see if you get a closer look of that uh, like some kind of Batmobile vehicle uh, I wish that uh, Green Hornet had a car like this this is the back end here Lost focus again. What they had on the bottom of this is the uh, exhaust here on this side. I lost the other piece. But I might scavenge it around. Might be able to uh, figure out a way to rebuild these cars. I know I could do something different with this. I like taking old junky cars and making them into slayer vehicles. Vampire, hunting, monster. Well, monster slayer vehicles. Cars like this here. That's kind of a neat. Let's get back to focus. Get a little closer here. That's the exhaust there. 
that's the back end of it. I guess these are the fuel fillers here, but this is where the lights would be at. So it'll be an interesting vehicle. I can't remember us building these cars. But they're kind of neat.